Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Apocalypse Movies. Uh, I'm Jacob Bartley, and I'm joined by Gio Ramos and Jake Berlin. How are you guys doing? Good. What's up, man? Pumped to be talking about yeah. Yeah. This is our Logan Great. spoilers discussion and review. I put out a non-spoilers review. You can go check that out if you haven't seen the movie yet. But if you have seen the movie, you should definitely check out this spoilers discussion. We're going to get into it, get into detail, talk about everything that we want to talk about. And if it wasn't self-explanatory, it's going to spoil the movie for you. So if you haven't seen the movie, you should probably stop this video. But just like a regular review, we're going to talk about things that we like, things that we don't like, um, and give it a score at the end. But it's more of a discussion, kind of like people sitting around talking about the movie. So I haven't really heard your guys' thoughts on the film. Like, I have an idea of what you guys think, but I don't know yet. So let's start with you, Jake. Um, just overall impression of the movie. Like, first thoughts walking out. Uh, I mean, I was... I think Gio could probably attest to this, too. I was kind of, like, quiet as I walked out of the movie. Um, I was still kind of just thinking about everything and processing it. Uh, it's it's an amazing movie. and um, <laughs> It's more just... You know, people are saying greatest superhero movie of all time. It's just a great film, period. Yeah. Um, it's it's a true film. You know, you you don't even think about superheroes or comic books while you're watching this, even though they're in the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, so no, I had a really good time. It's what I expected. Um, there were things that I definitely didn't expect to see in the movie. Um, so I, I definitely got what I wanted. I think we got what we deserve as far as a Wolverine movie going forward. Um, and no, it's I I walked out very very happy with what I saw. Yeah, Gio? yeah, I completely echo uh, what Jake said. The last shot is Wolverine dead, and the X <laughs> right there. We're talking spoilers. I forgot it was okay? a spoilers review, <laughs> like, and I'm like, whoa! And, and then that's it. You walk out the theater, and you're just like, man, that that's it. Beautiful like, ending. It, it's a beautiful closing to an amazing run uh, from Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Um, it's everything I, I expected. It was a much slower film, a drama piece comic book elements in there but um, I mean it's just it, it, it was a perfect send off and the Wolverine film that as uh, we as fans when we first saw him when we were like kids now we're adults we get to finally see a real take on Wolverine and it, it, it was just beautiful it was emotional it was everything I expected it's the movie that Hugh Jackman deserved absolutely as the character mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense because everyone like a lot of people saw the first one when they were a kid, and now all of those people are adults now, yeah. and they yeah. get to see this adult version. Yeah, of sorry, Wolverine. kids, you guys get your uh, you guys get the Marvel Cinematic Universe w during its golden age. Okay, how lucky are you? Hey, I saw people parents taking their five year olds to see Deadpool. If they can handle Deadpool, they can handle, they can handle yeah, Wolverine. Sure. This, I think this is a lot more violent though. Like, it is, but um, <laughs> Deadpool is pretty violent at the same time. Yeah, yeah, it is, and Deadpool's a lot more crude <laughs> and sexual and entertaining. I guess not to, not to take anything like, away from Logan. comedy wise. Logan yeah. uh, is definitely a slower film, so it's, which yeah. is like it that makes the movie better in my oh, opinion. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave my thoughts on the non spoiler review, but I I loved the movie. It's it exceeded my expectations. I tried to stay off of reviews. I was trying to stay away from what like the board of mouth was about the movie, but unfortunately, you hear things no matter what. Mm -hmm. The TV spots have the Rotten Tomatoes score in it, which kind of upset me but i knew the rotten tomato score before i went in but for myself i was trying to keep my expectations tempered and they were pretty high but and it exceeded those expectations like i was blown away and so when the movie first starts i'm like i'm trying to just figure it out you know like the first 45 minutes i'm like all right this is pretty good so far but there was a moment like an hour and 15 minutes into the movie where i was like oh my god this movie is amazing I was just like it just hit me out of nowhere and from that point on I was like just in awe the whole time through and I was like I was just smiling the whole time just watching this movie and not just because of the violence and the action which is all incredible but because of the characters and their interactions mm -hmm. and there's several different relationships being developed throughout this movie and that's what this movie's really about, is the relationships with these characters. So let's talk about some specifics and what we love. This is probably going to be the longest segment of our review, because obviously we all love the film. Uh, so Jake, what stood out to you mostly? Like, uh, well, what you just said, the characters, I think that uh, it's a true character piece and mm -hmm. something we've never seen in the quote-unquote comic book genre. Um, it's just Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, Daphne Keene, um, who plays X-23, mm -hmm. uh, all three of them were just so great together. Um, the the combination of, of Professor X and X twenty three, 
and then a combination of I think what the best part of the movie for me was Professor X and uh, Logan yeah by far was yeah. the best part of the movie um, and then obviously you have Wolverine X-23 and the relationship and the evolution they took throughout the movie yeah. um, it's just the characters in the film uh, what James Van Gogh did was just so fantastic not just with those three but um, the villain too I thought was, was pretty strong and Boyd Holbrook I, or not the not he's not the main villain but uh, the one we see most of the time who play, is played by Boyd, Boyd Holbrook. I think mm-hmm. his name is Donald Pierce. Donald Pierce. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's right. I thought he was very strong. Kind of an a interesting counter to Wolverine because, you know, in the movie he says, man, I was a fan of you as, when I was a kid. Yeah, and, exactly. And, which is really cool to hear yeah. kind of um, in this in this universe. So I thought he was very strong. Um, just the story in general was really strong. It was very, even though they traveled, you know, long miles and, and big action, not big action, but just a lot of blood and guts and like, gore it was very small scaled oh yeah um, it was sure. a very contained story which is what which i enjoyed very much mm-hmm. um, i like the big outlandish stuff like Guardians of the galaxy or avengers or whatnot but um seeing a contained story like this uh a la deadpool in a way um is is something i'm very interested in I, i'm very happy they did they didn't have to go super big for the final wolverine movie or something they gave the movie that they wanted to do, and it, it ended up being it's a very pretty, small scale. It's pretty big, but <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, but no, the, those are those are the main positives to me. I mean, there's a lot of them, and I'm gonna save some of them for you guys. But uh, the characters is definitely the one that stands out to me the most. Yeah, just going off of what Jake says, I mean, Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart, we see them portraying these characters once again, but in a way that we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. I mean, Hugh Jackman is older; he's weary. You know, he. Uh, the Logan that we see is is very much real. You know, there's a scene in early on where he's pulling his uh, claw yeah. out and he's in pain. He's just it, it, it hurts. And like in previous Wolverine movies, we just see him go ching and then that's it. Like there's no pain or anything. But in this one, you know, there's blood. Um, there's scars on him. You know, his healing factor uh, has gone away. And just just to see an, an older Wolverine, um, a, a more real life, you know, as close as you can get, you know, the alcohol, uh, depression, um, that kind of stuff. It just, it really shows what the character, um, his curse, his immortality, and how much that's taken a toll on him, you know. He wants to die in this movie. Um, and Patrick Stewart, I mean, like, we've never seen a Professor X like this. We're so used to seeing him... Uh, play you know a level-headed guy the father figure yeah. the guy who's always composed you know who's always you know um you know guiding these mutants and now when we first see him he's saying all these random things he's like going through a uh, dementia you guys would say a um, brain disease a yeah, brain boy, disease yeah. yeah and it's it's really it's it's chilling and it's it's haunting to see a little bit because we've we've seen these characters uh for so many years and we've never seen them like this and uh there's so much heart to the story, um, you know, um, Logan taking care of Professor X, um, you know, it just, it, it, it kind of echoes, you know, in real life, you know, you take care of the people who took care of you, and that was just really deep, um, you know, the action, it just, right from the start, it wastes no time, you know, <laughs> it was no time, yeah. like, and um, it's just, uh, all around, it's just, it, it's everything that you want, um, everything that... Um, only an adult can understand as far as like mature things you know as a kid you won't get what Wolverine is going through this and that you'll you'll be bored you won't understand but as an adult you know uh, this movie knew exactly what its audience was and it it succeeded greatly so I mean the characters the story I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit or or go Um, into that well just talking and thinking about this movie makes me want to see it again so bad um there's so many positives to take away from this movie, but the one big thing, which I don't want to say I was worried about, but I was like questioning, was at the X-23 character, Laura, mm-hmm. and how she was going to be handled. Child actors can be iffy because they're not the best performers, mm-hmm. and some of them are, but um, I was a little questionable about her, and she was my favorite part of the movie. Just her character overall from her, her art. origin, yeah. how she was made, and how she's his daughter, like... Genetically, they created, they used his DNA to impregnate a, a Mexican lady, and then she, that's how she was made. Yeah. And her origin, and then her character, as we, we see her not talk for like the, over an hour of the film. Three quarters of an hour. I was worried about that. Yeah. You think she's mute, and then once she starts talking, 
she's great. Mm-hmm. I love that they made her Hispanic. Like, that is incredible to me because we always talk about diversity in especially these comic book properties. And if they're going to continue with this character and have an adult version of her later, like a teenage version of her somehow, it's going to be tough because it's set in 2029. And then any future movies, unless they use time travel, it's going to be further than that. Which is okay. They can do a set of X-Men movies set in the future. Oh, Cable. Yeah, exactly. New Mutants. And, and they kept referencing New Mutants mm-hmm. in the movie. Like, what if that team of those kids go on to become their own mm-hmm. little team? You know, right. they could totally it's do that with yeah. her as the leader. Um, and I just love that. <laughs> like, she speaks Spanish. She has an accent. Like... That was all incredible. And to Logan's me. like, whoa, whoa, whoa! You could talk. And then like, there, <laughs> that moment when she's like yelling at him in Spanish, oh. I was like, shut the fuck up, yeah. <laughs> dude. There was, ironically enough, this movie was funny. Mm-hmm. Like with all the dark themes and everything going on, this movie was actually really funny. The stuff between X twenty three and Wolverine is where it came from. Oh yeah, yeah, and also the stuff between Patrick, yeah. between uh, Professor X and Logan, like. They're bickering. They're like talking. It's like a father son relationship. Yeah. Like yeah. they're like talking shit to each other the whole time. And but they, you know, they love each other. So it's yeah. again tying back into the characters and their relationships. There was a father son, a father daughter thing going on with, um, and kind of like a grandfather granddaughter thing too. Oh, yeah. with oh, Professor yeah. X yeah. and and Laura. Um, but yeah, sh- action wise, she was incredible. Like sh- that that was amazing seeing them fight side by side. So. She was my favorite part of the movie, but um, I just, the action is incredible. Like, the, the way, this is what we've always wanted to see from Wolverine. Like, and they show you from the get-go, like, you're going to get Berserker Wolverine, like, oh, several times ending, throughout this movie. When he takes the full, uh, the full, uh, what, what the jar of, the jar whatever, of uh, yeah. whatever that thing is that pumps him up, and then he's just going Berserker, he's just sprinting through the woods and just chopping at everything, dude. As soon... I ha- Crazy. As soon as he put that stuff in, I was like, oh, he's going to die. Like, he's definitely going to die. And, yeah. I, and usually, like, you don't want your main characters to die, but the, the way this is was handled was great. Like, because you know he's not going to play him again. Mm-hmm. So, and... Unfortunately. Yeah, and that's okay, because he's done it well, he for could. 17 years. He could. I mean, I personally think he's going to have a, a cameo in Deadpool. He's going to come out of retirement. But I kind of don't want him to. Um, I was because it was such a good. Yeah, anime. exactly. Yeah. I kind of want that to be the last time I see him on screen as mm-hmm. uh, as this character. Yeah. Um, and I, I could see how someone could think how she turns the cross into an X to be cheesy, but I loved it. No, it was, oh, that it was, was perfect, perfect. dude. Was perfect. That yeah. like gave me the chills yeah, it because it, it makes so much sense. Um, but yeah, I could. Any other pauses for you guys? Yeah, I mean, out? there's man, this movie is so heavy. Like, uh, this is a movie for. I think, I mean, it's a movie for uh, all adults, obviously, but I think it, it really hits home for, for Wolverine fans and fans who have followed the X-Men films. Like, there's a couple scenes that, that made me choke up a little bit. One scene in particular, um, we see it in the trailer when uh, Wolverine is burying Professor X. Yeah. And yeah. then he's standing over the grave he and he's talk. like, he can't talk. He says, at least this place has water and it has I think he says sun or something like yeah, that yeah he can't talk to him when he walks and away. he's choking yeah. up and I'm like oh my god no 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 and then like when he goes and he starts beating up the truck people are laughing I'm like and I, I wasn't laughing I was like man this guy's like he's lost it you know mm-hmm. and next point Laura she's looking from a distance she's, she's like she, she feels uh, sorry for him you know cause uh, she sees how close uh, the bond was, and she herself got to know Professor X a little bit and grew a connection. And it's just, man. And then the other scene was, uh, I mean, like you already said it, like when he, when he dies, and then she puts the, the cross to the <laughs> X, and it's like, that's just beautiful right there. Even yeah. Regardless of how cheesy, it, it's still beautiful to see. Yeah, and you know, we talk about Wolverine and the kind of character arc he takes and what this movie meant for him and whatnot, but. Uh, the arc they gave Professor X, uh, specifically the Winchester stuff, mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys recognized or caught what actually happened during that. He killed, he killed so 70 X-Men. Did they say that specifically? Yeah, the radio in the movie said that. He killed 70 oh, X-Men. Oh, I didn't care. Wow. Cause, all right, so when he's in the bed, at the when they're at that family's house, yeah. he says... I remember what I did. Yes, he killed 70 X-Men. Oh, Holy wow. Shit. I didn't catch because that. Because of one of those events. That's why Logan is so, like, focused on not letting that happen. Yeah. Wow. Like, the arc they gave him and, like, 
just the tragic background they gave him in this specific film is second to none, in my opinion, in any X-Men movies. And obviously, Logan had that as well. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit later about um, the clone of Wolverine. But when those two were going up against each other, a lot of people are talking about, and Gio and I, or we had talked about this through the Messenger, yeah. but... Mm. Um, Oh, like the clone, like that's kind of cheesy or whatnot. But you have to think about the actual meaning behind it. Like that's that's what he could have became if he didn't see the X Men or find Professor X or Professor X didn't find him in X Men. Yeah, like yeah. he could have became who that clone was and had no feeling or heart or anything and just been this animal. Um, so that kind of just character piece and um, pinpointing, if you will, is is very strong. And sometimes like that doesn't work. Period. That kind of clone stuff. And James Mangold found a way to work with it, um, with the underlying meaning of it. So yeah, I so, I mean that was one of my negatives at first. I when I first saw the clone, I was like, mm. I was thrown off by it a little bit. But then like five minutes after it hit me, I was thinking about it and I was like, wait a minute. So this is what he was created to be in the first place. He's his own worst animal. enemy, and that's and his enemy. Through is, the yeah. first movie, all the way until Logan. He's been fighting with himself yep. this whole time. He's been he's upset with himself for the bad things that he's done, the people that he's hurt, the people that he's killed, people that have died because of him. And he's physically fighting himself, mm -hmm. but he's also emotionally inside always been battling himself ever since the first movie. So <laughs> that's what the clone represents. And some people don't understand that. So I could see if they're surface level, the clone is kind of dumb. But yeah. if you understand what it represents, then it's beautiful in a way. Yeah. Um, real quick, I want to ask you guys. Do you guys think uh, the the farm scene, the family, do you think they served a purpose in the movie? Um, yeah. Do, do you think it was necessary? I think that's when Logan realized characters? what Professor X and X-23 meant to him. Okay. Yes. Yeah. At the, the, specifically the dinner table scene. Yeah. That's kind of where he kind of like almost flipped in a way. This yeah. is what life. Because he went out and he helped feels, the father with yeah. the with the water, and then he came back and mm -hmm. um, he found you know spoilers. He found Professor X, and um, it kind of just all went from there. But um, I think that's kind of where the change kind of switched in him. And to your point, that um, that also happened in the Wolverine. Yes, when he uh, helps the the village uh, mm -hmm. chopping a tree. Yeah, and like for a moment, he he gets a taste of purpose of meaning in life so i agree with you i just I thought that was something i wanted to ask you guys so. yeah and then them getting slaughtered was also meaningful because it shows again like anyone who comes across in his path dies and gets hurt and that's why he keeps avoiding yeah. being involved with people and he said that to uh, laura later on yeah uh, during that scene during the nighttime like everyone i care about either dies or yeah gets and that's why he's yeah. fighting getting close with her he doesn't want to get close with her because every time everyone he gets close to dies gene died professor x now is dead you know even all these little strangers that he like gets close to they all end up dying yeah so like well, and, and laura you know off topic but she responded fantastic by saying that i'll be okay see that's what i'm it's talking about how brilliant is, oh. it is like it's so hard to mm -hmm. execute those scenes with a child actor but they did it perfectly yeah. like she responded and, just yeah, yeah he said perfect. everyone I care about gets hurt or dies and she's like then I'll be fine yeah. then I should be it's, fine it's, <laughs> like, the little oh things God. little things in this movie the, the dialogue the moments you know uh, it's just it, it, it makes all the difference one thing that we haven't talked about I don't know and I don't know if you guys noticed or not but the score did you guys recognize it at all um, it was so western yeah, yeah so I, old I school western it, yeah it was. Um, I, I thought it was. It built with the movie. Just he perfect. brought back the same uh, guy who who did the Wolverine, uh, James Mangold. Uh, I, I can't remember his name, but um, yeah. So some of some of the uh, slower, quieter moments when that score kicks in, it just elevates the emotion. Yeah. So, let's talk about stuff that might have disappointed us a little bit, or anything. I know we're probably all going to be nitpicking, honestly. But um, is there anything? So I'll start this off. For me, when the movie first started, there was like. They started cussing a lot, like f bomb, f bomb everywhere. All these f bombs, and it threw me off at first because that works in Deadpool because of the character of Deadpool. But for me, I was like, if you've been watching all these X Men films and like they're set in PG thirteen world, mm -hmm. they don't cuss like that. They never have, even though Wolverine has dropped a few f bombs yeah. here and there. But it's like first class. Every other sentence he's dropping an f bomb in this movie, and then I was, and for me, it kind of 
set me off a little bit. Then I like was thinking like it's set so far in the future and they're just fed up with life, so they just don't care anymore. But um, did you guys feel that at all? That like it didn't fit with the consistency of the characters throughout their history? I f- oh, go ahead, Jake. Uh, well, I, I was just quickly gonna say that I didn't feel that. I felt like. They were just letting you know right away, hey, this is an R-rated movie, strap in for what you're going to okay. get. If you have okay. kids in the theater, get them out yeah. right now. Like, <laughs> That's how I felt. So, um, To me, this was uh, Hugh Jackman and James Mangold finally saying, uh, you know, thank you 20th Century Fox for giving us the R rating. Hugh Jackman saying, finally, I get to, you know, because Hugh Jackman, he's very knowledgeable about uh, Wolverine in the comics, and he knows the violence. Well, and, he just looks like know, an aggressive guy. Yeah, here, and, and so, so I felt like this was... So many years of wanting to go, you know, all in, but not being able to because, you know, um, these movies, you know, PG-13, they got to you know, make money and this and that. But when they finally, when Fox finally gave them, you know, the the green lights, uh, go dark and, you know, uh, very graphic, uh, they wasted no time. Mm-hmm. So, but I can see what you're saying. I, I definitely see what you're saying. You know, it was quite a bit of fuck you's motherfuckers yeah uh, this so like it just threw me off at first because i wasn't expecting it i knew mm-hmm. we were gonna get some language in this but i didn't expect so much yeah. but now i think now that i know that it's there going in a second time i yeah. think i'm gonna be fine with it but just at first it threw me off oh, yeah, for sure i'm really nitpicking here honestly uh, uh, did you guys have any problems with yeah that? i have two nitpicks and i actually i understand the meaning behind both of them but they just can, that didn't really fit with me um, I, and I don't know about you guys, but I felt like Professor X deserved a much bigger death. Like, I felt like he may have died too quickly or too, just kind of sudden. Yeah, kind I of get how the story mean. was going. But I also know that it was the animal side, animal side of a Wolverine that killed him. Yeah. Like, um, like I totally understand the meaning behind it. I just felt like he deserved something more because it's the last time we're going to see him ever as the character, you know, and maybe. So well, I yes, I, I, mean, uh, I hope Deadpool last too. Time. I really hope. But um, I just felt like he deserved something more after seeing him as well as for seventeen years as the character and all this kind of stuff. Right. Um, but again, that's a nitpick. And the second one um, is the main villain of, and I don't know the guy's name. The doctor, the, though, yeah, the right? doctor. Yeah. Um, again, I understand the meaning. He's not killing mutants. He's actually enhancing the kind by creating their own. Um, even though he actually killed the race of mutants himself. Mm-hmm. Um, he's building it back up again, just in his own, in his own way. But I felt like it was just it, it wasn't. I liked Donald Pierce more than I liked him. Yeah, and it just yeah he came in too late to the movie. He didn't really show up very much, and he didn't really fit into what I would would have wanted for a villain. But um, I did like the scene where uh, he he said that Wolverine killed his dad, and he's like, yeah, probably <laughs> at the very end of the movie. So, um, but those are just two very nitpicks for me. Yeah, um, I I kind of felt the same way about the Professor X death. But, I mean, uh, I kind of get what James Mangle was doing. You know, you just, you, you know, immediately mm-hmm. you take him out. And well, and he, he, Professor X has tried for 17 years or however long to save Wolverine from being this guy. Right. And the clone animal version of him kills him. So That's, it's like symbolic, it's such you know? a, It's such a dark death, yeah. man. Can you, like, imagine, be, chest. imagine being Professor X and, like, you know, you think you're talking to Wolverine, and then you turn around and... And what he was saying, he said, this, this is the best. greatest night I've yeah. had in the longest right. time. And then he's like, Logan? And he gets killed. And he sees him. Logan. He sees Logan, and he dies probably thinking that it's it's Logan. Like, it's just, it's so dark. Ugh. And then, uh, what, what was the other one about the, the, the main doctor? Villain, main villain. Yeah, I mean, look, what we know about previous X-Men films, and this one doesn't really go in any of the timelines... But uh, the president, government, they've established a good relationship with mutants, if not the X-Men, you know. But I mean, so I'm wondering, like, how the hell is this guy getting away with all this? You yeah. know? I mean, Well, this is so far in the future, like... Oh, it's 20, and it also and looks like it takes place in uh, behind the Mexican border. 20, 20, mutants 20, are extinct, yeah. too, in a way. Um, so for me, the, the villains weren't bad, but they weren't good either. Like, it kind of reminds me of most of the Marvel movies where... The villains are irrelevant. They they're there to serve the plot, and it's really about the three main characters: mm-hmm. Professor X, Wolverine, and X twenty three. So I didn't mind. I didn't really want more from them, but they could have been better villains overall. I thought Boyd Holbrook, his performance was amazing. Oh, man. His Boyd performance Holbrook. was great. The character didn't have a lot of depth or anything. It didn't need to, but he was great. And he's the he's the lead in the pre- the Predator show. I'm That's excited awesome. now. He's yeah. great. He's in Narcos, which oh the Netflix, Netflix show. Okay. I've watched a little bit of the first season. And he's great in that. So all right, so that let's give our. I got some negatives. 
I'm sorry. I, oh, I go I ahead. To, I was just responding to Jake's. <laughs> um, look, uh, as 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 beautiful and symbolic as Wolverine's death was, I mean, who didn't see that coming? Honestly, did you guys see that? I saw it coming a different way. Okay. I thought Laura was going to shoot him. Oh, with, with the, the adamantium, adamantium bullet? bullet. Wow. And end his suffering. Yeah. So, I don't know. I was just like... It, it kind of happened a bit too quickly. I mean, one moment he's just running through the woods, this and that, but then like... Well, he was already deteriorating in a way, and the serum just... Right. Kind of so I said, as soon as he put the serum in, I knew he was going to die yeah. because he was going to give it one last, you know, go to save her, mm-hmm. and then he was going to die. But how weird is it that his animal version self is the one who killed him? And there's also yeah. there was I also think. a part of me that felt like he was going to take these kids and almost be the Professor X version. That's and, I got that little like feeling just too. a slight feeling yeah. within that moment of them going to Eden. Yeah, um, I felt like maybe that was going to happen, but towards the end, as soon as like they went off and everything, I knew that it was coming. So. Yeah, and my last one, it's no secret that James Mangold uh, took some inspirations uh, with this film. Uh, I immediately thought of Children of Men. I don't know if you guys have seen it yet. Uh, Unforgiven, that uh, Clint Eastwood masterpiece. And for myself, like if you're going to take inspirations from any of those films, yes, take it from the classic masterpieces uh, like like those. But I felt like it got a little bit too much similar to those uh, films, and I can only I can only go into detail if you guys have seen the movies. I don't want to spoil the movies, seen them, so, so I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna say for myself, the movies they, they they felt a little too similar as far as plot points go. Like you know, think about. Point Break and mm-hmm. The Fast and the Furious, you know, how similar those, uh, you know, those uh, plot beats are. So it's, it's a minor nitpick. Again, I love the inspiration that he took, but I think it was just a little bit too much. So. All right, well, let's kind of give our, our last final thoughts on the movie. Any last little positives you might have forgotten and then your overall score out of 10? Let's start with you, Jake. Uh, I mean, it's a fantastic film. It's from start to finish, it, it will blow your mind away in uh, multiple ways, bullets and claws <laughs> and stuff. But, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I did a whole thing on Twitter, like five or six tweets, just giving my review of the movie, and so I'm not going to go into detail about it, but uh, character story, um, directing, acting, just everything from top to bottom is pretty fantastic. I think there's a really, really good chance Hugh Jackman could get nominated for an Oscar for this movie. Wow. Uh, I think he was just that good in it. Um, The role called for it. Um, So I definitely recommend dropping anything you're doing right now and going to see it, uh, because it's just that good, so... Um, I will give Logan a nine and a half out of ten. Nice. Um, I gave my score on the non spoilers review. It hasn't changed, uh, but overall, I absolutely love this movie. It, it it was more than I wanted, and you know, I it exceeded my expectations overall, all around in every aspect, really. Um, and I give it a nine out of ten. I'm gonna stick with a nine out of ten for Logan. Logan is a slow paced drama very beautiful very emotional um it's the uh conclusion to a great run uh by two actors who have uh you know really brought these characters on screen in the best way possible um they were there from the high from the low um great introduction uh to x23 who i think will uh you know take the mantle and uh, she'll be back she'll be back in future films uh Excellent directing and writing by James Mangold. Um, he surpassed his first effort, um, and this film, from beginning to end, it follows through in tone. It's consistent um, in its violence and in its uh, its focus. You know, keeping the story on these characters, not throwing in other characters just for the hell of it, not referencing uh, past X Men films when it doesn't serve a purpose later on in the story. Um, so it's definitely a film for X-Men and Wolverine fans, definitely a film for adults, much slower paced and much, much more, uh, um, uh, beautiful. Yeah, all right. So, uh, I'm going to give it, I'm, I'm speechless. All right. This movie is excellent. It's, it's so great. I'm going to give it a nine and a half as well out of, uh, 10. Nice. All right. Well, you got our scores. You got our thoughts on the movie. That's going to do it for our spoilers review of Logan. I want to thank Jake and Gio for joining me on this spoilers review. Thanks a lot, guys. And you can find us all on this Apocalypse Movies YouTube channel. Please subscribe and hit that like button. We're putting out reviews, and we got a bunch of podcasts going and our weekly movie news show. So go ahead and check all those things out. Thanks again for listening. Until next time, you all take care.